Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the Linux edition. These are recorded live. Recorded? Wow, I can't talk today, apparently. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, engage in all of the chat and all of the other nonsense that might go on the uh, the line here. So uh, let's go ahead and get on into the news here. Just a couple of articles. First, the KDE Plasma 6.2 is available for public testing and here's what's new other than of course the pop-up asking for donations which does occur once a year but i still think it is a bad idea uh however uh, i mean i'm in the minority i'll recognize i'm in the minority but sometimes you got to march to the beat of a different drummer i am marching to the beat of a notification is to notify you of something important not to solicit donations there's a thought. And I highly support um, putting that notification inside of the settings panel so people see it more than once a year. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm okay with uh, them seeking some avenue of soliciting donations. The notification is not the way to do it. All that being said, and that was a video a couple weeks ago, uh, but the new 6.2 does carry with it some tremendous, tremendous benefit. In fact, it looks like it might have, I'm going to look into this monitor brightness control here soon. It looks like this might be the second time I've seen this. Deepin actually has this built in. Not on a laptop, you can adjust the brightness of the monitor. And a friend of mine installed a package for that on Linux Mint because he uses it and dims the screen a lot. Uh, at night, he'll dim his screen down. During the day, he'll brighten it up a little bit. So if there's like brightness control that's not laptop, just regular monitor brightness control, that's actually uh, kind of cool. But there's a lot of other new features inside of here. Of course, a lot of improvements for Wayland, uh, color management, full sticky key support for Wayland, and auto scroll, uh, auto scrolling feature. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of adjustments. Wayland is getting better with each iteration, and so we're getting a little bit of uh, of that coming on down the road. Of course, I'm not an advocate of Wayland specifically, but uh, I definitely support its development and uh, I love having the option for those that need it. And who knows, eventually I may very well adopt Wayland on a regular basis. I just want to see it ready before I do, um, which it's getting there. It is definitely getting there. We also have some more support, WebAuth for small base network authentication. Uh, we have some open Wi-Fi security. A uh, new option to disable smooth scrolling. Uh, and uh, inside of Discover, you'll have the Graphical Package Manager App Store been approved with support for Postmark OS mobile operating system. So uh, I'll have to... I'll have to re-download the post-market for the Raspberry Pi when 6.2 comes out and see what that looks like. I, I didn't get a chance to look at 6 yet on the mobile. I downloaded it, never got a chance to test it out yet. But there are some overhauls in the settings app as well. Accessibility keyboard, Thunderbolt, uh, KCM modules, in addition to accent color settings. So you have some new changes among that. Um, and then it does have extra support for drawing tablets, battery monitor, weather, and minimizing all widgets. I'm not sure that was already working fine. Was there a problem with that? I don't know. But there are a few other options coming as well. So you do have a lot of really nice features um, inside of this. And just the list is just huge. So we can't get into into everything here. However, uh, Plasma 6.2 does look like an amazing um, release of Plasma, notwithstanding the pop-up notification soliciting donations. <laughs> Uh, cinnamon is also going to get a new theme. Uh, we're not going to cover everything on the cinnamon uh, or on the Linux Mint report. I think we'll uh, we'll cover that um, um, in a future video. I usually do those when they come out, and it just came out a couple days ago. But uh, that being said. Um, the biggest thing I want to focus on here, and they talked about some of the issues, LMDE5 is end of life. They did actually talk about there was a, a small gap that when the, the upgrader was broken. Now, I upgraded my system and did the live upgrade on my production laptop. I did that a while ago, and it worked great. No problem. Sometime after that and before last week, it was broken. This had to do with Ubuntu... Ubuntu pulling in packages right while Debian did a freeze and there was an error in some of the packages that completely messed up some of the cinnamon uh, issues. That's fixed. 
And we might address that in more detail later. But the biggest take home here is one of the things I've always said looking at uh, doing distro reviews and things. The default cinnamon outside of Linux Mint is atrociously ugly. Linux Mint is absolutely beautiful on cinnamon. And there's a few other things that do cinnamon beautiful out of the box. But your typical distribution, your Arch, your Debian, just a typical distribution, you go to install Cinnamon on it, you boot into Cinnamon, and you're looking at the ugliest, most atrocious thing you've ever seen in your life. And that's coming from a huge Cinnamon fanboy. So uh, you can, of course, get on there and install extra things. Usually what I do is I just install the Arc Dark theme, which is a beautiful theme in and of itself. I'll just install that on all the things. That's what I'm using on my Raspberry Pi 5. That's what I'm using on my Endeavor OS, both running Cinnamon. But what uh, they are doing is with 6.4, they are going to be debuting a aesthetic enhancements to the theme so that if you're not using Linux Mint and you just install the basic uh, Cinnamon desktop environment on a dis on a Linux distribution and boot into it, they're going to make it look a whole lot better. Now, they have not released details about what that looks like yet, so I will be definitely doing a video on that as soon as I start seeing some things popping up. But there is definitely, uh, I'm excited about that as somebody who loves Cinnamon and have always said that Cinnamon is still one of the ugliest desktops to install out of the box, despite it is my favorite. Again, Arc Dark, Papyrus Icons, that at least makes it look decent. And on to some other news here. Uh, VirtualBox 7.1 makes a big release, and the Linux release for this is absolutely amazing. That This might actually drive me to push system updates on my one of my production computers that I usually hold updates back. Of course, they have a new logo and an updated interface. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, but for Linux guys, they have a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, the first is better use of the clipboard sharing on Wayland sessions for Linux, Linux hosts and guests addressing a long-term issue with this. So if you're using Wayland guest and host, you will finally be able to use your clipboard sharing. Uh, we also have the uh, easier ability to transfer files between the Linux and the Windows host guests with sharing uh, um, upgrades, uh, uh, sharing clipboard uh, with guest edition. So there was a problem with sharing information between clipboards because, you know, windows and Linux oftentimes are different file systems. This is going to fix that. And they also have up, uh, upgraded unattended installations with now being supported, uh, for cloud-based installers and things like that. Now, the other features that we are getting, which I am super excited to look at armor virtualization for Linux and BSD, uh, on Mac OS installations on Apple Silicon. And we have a uh, new NAT engine with IPv6 support. So if you're requiring IV, uh, IPv6 support, you will have that. Improved screen recording now uses less CPU resources. I've never actually used that feature. I just use a simple screen recorder or an OBS or something like that. Uh, to wrap things up, here are some other notable changes, tweaks, to improve accessibility, cross platforms, fix for the Oracle VirtualBox extension packs, uh, P -E -E, uh, P -U -E -L license performance dashboard now shows the system resources for cloud VMs and flags for CPU ID instructions with when um, Hyper, uh, Hyper V is in use. So you can go ahead and get that. And on to our feature story here uh, Fedora is working on a, um, a micro emulation in order to get like a, a micro VM in order to get emulation for x86 applications working on ARM processors. So as you are working on various things and you realize that you're on a Raspberry Pi, but there's no ARM version of the software. Now, if it's usually a FOSS software, usually somebody has done it. Uh, so that is definitely a, a you know, a thing that you need to do. But for proprietary software, you might need to run or for other stuff that just haven't gotten to it. Maybe it's a small project. They don't have the resources to recompile for ARM. They are now implementing the FEX emulator on Fedora. So this works with AARCH, uh, AARCH64. So that is already combined and working. And it works well with ARM64 on Fedora as well. So what they're doing is they're they're setting up a an emulation running a micro 
a, vir a virtual machine on si uh, inside of the ARM processor, which is going to allow you to run any x86 or x86 64-bit applications inside of an ARM processor, so there's no need to look for the ARM version. So that's kind of what they're doing. It is a really neat approach there. So I don't know. I might have to download uh, one of this is out in Fedora 42. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to see if I can't find some 32-bit software package. I don't know. Would it be interesting to try and get something uh, something like that running on <laughs> Fedora on a Raspberry Pi? I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. But that is actually pretty cool. It is a, a step up in, in probably bridging the gap between uh, when software is going to be available for ARM and not. Now, we're going to start seeing more software being available for ARM. So this is probably more of a stopgap measure than anything else because the latest generations of CPUs are coming out as ARM. They are having some of their own problems, but that being said, they are also working on that because it is definitely a future people are talking about. And so there you have, um, there you have your... Um, uh, your various elements of that. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page and you can jump on over there, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. We should be on track for getting the short stories are coming back online this month. I'm going to target the 20th to get this month's short story up. Uh, so I did, uh, I, I just started writing, man. I just, I just, pff, I like what I got written down so far. It's pretty nice. I'll give you just one little hint. It deals with, uh, it deals with, um, uh, with AI and, uh, has some influence from one of my favorite Isaac Asimov stories. So, uh, it'll be definitely a, a good story. Uh, book production is also going well for everybody else. I'll have more information on that soon. But uh, that you can find information on all that over on Patreon, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. Thank you for watching, and we will see you all next time.